Hello, good afternoon and welcome to News Today here on your Joy News Channel on Multi TV. This bulletin is available on your Go TV Channel 144 and your DS TV Channel 421. Coming up, former Attorney General describes President Mohammed's decision to remit sentences of three jailed contemptors as an insult to judges in the country. We'll tell you more shortly. Meanwhile, the Progressive People's Party has described President Mahama as a weak president for giving in to demands by his party faithful to free the three contemptors. And police in the Bnoafu region arrest land guards alleged to be terrorizing residents of Fosukrum near Tiobodom. We have details of these stories, plus a lot more, including business, sports, entertainment, and international news, all coming up in the next hour here on News Today. Stay with us. My name is Kwabna Chenche Hinebwati. Many thanks for joining us here on News Today. To our first story, is our and former Attorney General in the SWA Kufo administration, Ayiko Otu, has described as a slap in the face, a decision by the president to cut short the prison sentence of three contemptors who threatened to kill judges in the country. President John Dramani Mahama on Monday remitted the four-man jail sentence of Sally Fumase, Alistair Nelson, and Godwin Akogan for death threats made on the lives of some Supreme Court judges presiding over a case involving the Electoral Commission. But speaking on news desk a short while ago, Lawyer Ayoko Otu said the decision by the president to free the three contemptors was an insult to the intellectual ability of judges in the country. It's a very painful thing for the judiciary. Remember that the judiciary ordinarily will not speak. You know, it is the bar, so I'll be a secretary of the bar before. You know, national secretary and president of Greater Accra Bar. We try to defend the judiciary. They will not talk. What is done, in effect, is saying that those judges who sat there are not reasonable. They don't know the difference between sentencing somebody to one month and sentencing somebody to four months. That's what is done. The people said we wanted to send a signal out there that these things must stop. And that's why I don't agree with this Tamaklo guy as well. I went in to beg and to say that we will not do that or repeat it anymore. Why should you continue repeating them? And thinking that the Supreme Court should sit there, you go and abuse, attack them, and come and beg. And then they ask you to go. What do you take the Supreme Court for? But some would say they were fined. They've paid. And That's what I'm saying. The fine they say that they want to go beyond allowing Sir John and the rest to go home. To send a signal that you do those, these things, you must f face, face the full rigors. So we, they know. They were the people who sentenced Atubiga to three days. Yeah. They were the people who sentenced Ken Kuranche, I think, to ten days. Yeah. You think they don't know? You are now teaching them that four months is too long. They should have made it one month. That's what you have done. You put a slap, you slap them in their faces. They are, they are not reasonable people. When they are given sentences, they should think. They don't just impose sentences. That is what he has done to them. They will sit down. Next time, let people misbehave and say, well, we will act. Because when we act, the person will tell us that we don't know. What we are doing is wrong. They know, he knows better. So he should deal with the matters. Why did he have to add, tag those words to the statement that they are now calling on panelists and the rest that when they go to take part in discussions, they must be circumspect in what they are saying? You think the Supreme Court didn't know that? That's what they were actually talking about. They, they, they don't live in cloisters. They live in society. Look at the constitution. The justice if it emanates from the people. People are allowed to take part. Lay people are allowed to take part in, in, in justice with jural system, you know, and the rest. Ordinary people take part. So you can criticize us, but be careful of the language that you use. Well, I go to add that the president is likely to pay dearly for freeing the three contemptors, a decision he describes as a betrayal of the state in the interest of the president's party affiliates. We say that they are political decisions. When you take a decision, remember that it can also be political. It may have consequences. True. I remember one judge saying so to some lawyers who went to court saying that uh, G, the, the workers of uh, Giyok, the slayers, had been wrongly you know, dismissed and that 
uh, they think it should be set aside, you know. And he said that there are times that presidents also take political decisions, yeah. so he should live with it. If that is what he has done, but it is in accordance with the law, so be it. But then live with it and let the people of Ghana decide whether they want to have a president who is not a president for all, but rather a president who wants to satisfy only the needs of. You see, you took an oath, a presidential oath, you know, to be father for all. I mean, that, that's what uh, I think uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Atam Mills put it. Yes, he wants to be father for all. And you are not being father for all. He, let, he, he may have to live with it. Uh, the, the elections are around the corner. Should live with, with it. We don't know whether these things make any difference. Remember, the kind of society that we run and the kind of you know, uh, things that influence people to vote. If we go and give them roofing sheets and give them head pans and uh, outboard motors and give V8 vehicles to uh, you know, chiefs and the rest. All this talk may come to nothing perhaps in the view of those people that they've been given something for which they want to vote. If at the end of the day they are looking at the issues and it becomes an issued based propaganda, um, issue paid uh, 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 campaign, you know, then, then from all indications things haven't gone right and people should have to take that into consideration. But if they are waiting for roofing sheets and bentwa and kako and money and, you know, uh, roofing sheet and V8 cars and things to be, ata kambu and mama kambu and whatever, the, these are the things that are going to influence them, I'm afraid. We may talk and talk and talk and they may not see, but I am confident that looking at the circumstances like President Kufo said, look at your circumstances and vote. The circumstances now do not look like the president must have another chance, including even what has happened today. I mean, yesterday, what happened yesterday. I do not see that he has a chance of making it. Meanwhile, the Progressive People's Party has described President Mahama as a weak president following his decision to free the three jailed contemners. The party had proud to the president's action been gathering signatures to compel him to respect the rule of law by allowing the three to serve their full four-month jail term. But speaking earlier today on the AM show, policy analyst of the Progressive People's Party, Kofi Asamoah said the decision by the president to give in to demands of his party members without recourse to the interest of the entire citizenry smacks of weakness. A trait he believes ought not be exhibited by a president. The president, based on the pressure from his party, has shown weakness in leadership and has controlled to the pressure. And I think that it, it, it symbolically is not good for our democracy. The president should have stood on his ground, especially when they have a very problematic history when it comes to their relationship with the judiciary. It should have been exercised in a way that it, it, it would have been acceptable to a cross-section of the Ghanaian society. Some of the gentlemen there are, are our friends, but we wish that we will place our desire for a distant democratic society over any friendship that we have with any of the contaminants. And I think the president should have also done the same thing by going beyond the membership of his party and, 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 and take decisions that will be in the best interest. How can the president say in the press statement that all of us should respect the decision of the Supreme Court and our court and turn around to pardon and undermine the sentences that were given for some form of discipline uh, to be um, uh, in our society. They can't have it both ways. So let's get you some reactions to these very issues. Joining me now in the studio is lead counsel for uh, the three persons uh, who are currently serving the jail term. We are told that by Friday they would be uh, free, they'll be released. Uh, joining me now in the studio uh, is Nana Ato Daje, senior counsel. Good afternoon, many thanks for joining us. Yeah, so uh, the, the, there's been a few reactions to this very issue, but maybe before we even tackle some of the issues that have been raised so far, uh, let's take a look at your clients and how they are taking this news of their imminent release. Well, I'm not um, really in touch with them now, but we are all in expectation. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if by now they might have heard, you know, uh, the news. But um, incarceration of any type is not correct. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that if they hear that they, there's an opportunity for being released, I'm sure they will be happy. I, I'm, I'm just curious, but because as lead counsel, I mean, it's been almost 24 hours since this thing happened. And as lead counsel, you've not uh, communicated to your clients? 
Yes, you know, they, they, uh, 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 some of our uh, solicitors are making contact, trying to establish contact. Yeah, but that's another matter. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a look at the reactions that are coming in. Uh, for lawyer Yuko, to whom we spoke to earlier on news desk, well, he suggested that this move by the president uh, smacks of uh, uh, an insult to the intellectual capabilities, if I should put it that way, of, of judges in the country. He thinks that, well, the president has, has not been fair to uh, judges in the country. Uh, what, what would you say to that? No, I, I wholly disagree with him. Uh, my good friend, um, um, uh, Mr. Yukwetu knows that every single judge, by his training, you know, um, knows that after he's finished a case, he's what we term functus officio. He, 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 it doesn't matter what happens after that. That's not his business. Indeed, if you uh, appear before a judge and uh, you do a case and you disagree with him, you can say, if you feel like, go on appeal. It, it, you are not trained to bother about what happens after that. But uh, to say that you don't be fair to the uh, uh, judges or judiciary, it's rather unfortunate. I mean, really, the judicial system has completed its uh, job. Just is to uh, determine cases. They finish with it. Now, it's within the realm of the executive, actually of the president, you know, once the petition comes up to deal with the issue of uh, uh, a pardon or amnesty. No, no, no one is questioning that. The issue has to do with it's the president's uh, decision to do this, obviously. Uh, it's appropriateness, whether or not it's right, given the circumstances and given the time. Yeah, but that, 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 that discretion is wholly that of the, of, the, of the president. I mean, I don't think we can challenge it. There's a constitutional um, a demand. Um, he is a, a mandate that is vested in him. He, there's an inbuilt mechanism that is the Council of State. You know, he has to consult the Council of State in this. And the Council the majority of, State, of these members, whom he appoints anyway. You, you, can, you can't be sure of that. I'm sure that we want to show due deference to the Council of State members. They are uh, respectable. But the president persons. does appoint members onto the Council of State, majority of the members, by the way. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm saying that the, these are institutions we must respect. You see, mm -hmm. you can't just stay outside and say that council of state, they are, what do you call it, they are pro-government. No, no, I would accept that one. That's right. The point I want to make anyway is that this is um, a, a process that, one, is legitimate, um, it's legal, it's constitutional, it's going through all the administrative processes. The petition, regular petition was submitted to the president. Actually, the response that came shows that the president acted on the petition of the contaminants alone. He, that's what the statement says. Mm -hmm. He acted on the petition of the contaminants who have shown great remorse and continue to show remorse, you see, and the president on compassionate grounds. You see, I don't think we should want to wish that one away. Mm -hmm. The president on compassionate grounds. We are all Christians, we are all Muslims, we are all Buddhists and whatnot. The, the core of religion is compassion, you know. If a person is he makes a mistake and he comes back and says, I'm sorry. He's entitled to some compassion. And the president, I think, has done it. But before I, I, I move from that, I want to say that for those who are saying that the president is acting as though he's dealing with his party men, that's unfortunate. Only recently, a year or so ago, the president exercised the same powers in respect of uh, Honorable Adamu Sakande. An MP. It's an MPP MP. Are the circumstances not different? Absolutely not. It's Some also would say you're comparing apples and oranges. Absolutely not. I mean, this was also on compassionate grounds. You see, he had been regularly convicted for whatever, you know, uh, uh, dual nationality, you know, uh, forgery. And then... Exactly. And so that, that was a hold completely it, different hold case. It, hold it. But he was, not, he was not granted pardon in respect of that. It was, it was because it was alleged that he was uh, in dispute. That's from what we read. Mm. And then on compassionate grounds, the president acted. So for me, I think the, the president has been fair. I mean, he's shown that he's a real leader. He deals with NPP. He deals with NDC. And then, look, only July this year, you remember, not less than 960 people were released on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the grounds of amnesty. So this is nothing special, really not special. If there is a problem, if there are other people... You, you, you don't think given the, the nature of this particular case and seeing that you're in an election year and such, some would describe as reckless comments by uh, social commentators are likely to plunge the country into chaos, you don't think this is a peculiar case that needs specific attention? Oh, absolutely. I mean, really. I would say that, um, first of all, I don't subscribe to 
uh, what the gentleman said. I think they went over bar, uh, uh, beyond bar. Secondly, I, I, I think that no matter what it is, they have been punished. And um, the president obviously backed the, the, the court's orders. He backed the court's orders. The president has not you know, um, a rubbish or uh, eliminated the conviction, the conviction still stands. Mm -hmm. They were asked to pay 10,000 Ghana cities, equivalent of 100 million cities each, which has been paid, you understand? In they have said, of, in oh, they, of which they would have been, yeah, would they have would have had to save one they, month. They have yeah. served at least by uh, Friday, they would have served one month imprisonment. Yes. So anybody who is saying that by interfering or uh, by uh, exercising his powers, he has eroded the powers of the court. He's not looking at it well. Let, let, In let, fact, he has backed or endorsed the court's position that reckless statements must be punished. Some would say, uh, obviously, I mean, there's a, there's a quote that uh, the law is in the bosom of the judges. Obviously, before the judges arrived at this decision, they would have taken into consideration all these things you speak of. And even after taking into consideration all these things, they still felt it necessary. They deemed it right to jail these three persons for four months. Yeah. Why then does the president come in to suggest that, well, I think it was a little too harsh. Let's just do one month. Why blame, why, why, why blame the president? Then blame the Constitution. Look, uh, Article 72 of the Constitution creates a framework under mm. which, A, the president can grant a pardon, you know, complete or partial. He can also remit sentences. Mm. He can uh, substitute lesser punishment for it. You see, the, the, the framers of the Constitution um, must have had something in mind that there is, there may be a situation where, you know, a president may be called upon to ameliorate situations. Yeah. Listen, it, of late, or the recent awards that made, I for what, the last uh, election, you remember what happened? The petition? Yes, I do. Yeah, we had a string of our friends, Ken Kranche, he had uh, how many days? Yes, uh, I, uh, I remember five, all those five days. days. Oh, you do, but well, okay, so we have to remember, remind ourselves mm -hmm. of that. Samia Uku. So, some would say, Samia Uku, some, would, some, would say some, some would say that president is the more reason why these people should have been allowed to stay in jail. Yeah, they've said in jail. They've been in there for one month. They should have been Look, allowed to serve their full sentence. You haven't been in jail for one day, so you can afford to say that. But I'm saying that they've been in jail for one one month at least. Uh, they've paid the fines, mm. you know. Uh, and, um, they, I'm sure that when they come back, they will tell their story. You understand? The whole uh, the point I'm making is that it should be on. We should look at the whole issue on compassionate grounds. You know, compassion. When, on compassion, yes, on, on the grounds of compassion. Mm -hmm. If the president thinks that the previous, for instance, the previous uh, sentences have been around maximum one month, three days, four days, if you go four months, it is, it is his, uh, what do you call it, his prerogative. It is his right, you understand? Mm -hmm. he, he has to, uh, I don't think that it's, it flies in the face of the judges. There are two issues being dealt with. We are talking about judicial function. The president has no right to intervene in the judicial function. After the judicial function has been exhausted, okay, then the constitution says within the, the other realm, the president as executive president, yeah. not as, as head of a government, now head of state, that's a two di different. Right. No more the head of uh, uh, government, but head of state, he can exercise certain powers. Mm -hmm. Now as head of the state president, you know, he was able to deal with the case of uh, uh, Sakandi, Adabu Sakandi, and also deal with the Muntier and so many other cases. Okay. It's a routine thing. Uh, that, that, let, uh, let, let, I, I don't know what your reaction will be to this, but what would you make of uh, suggestions, particularly by the Progressive People's Party, uh, seeking to uh, suggest that, well, indeed, the president has shown how weak he is as a president by uh, giving in to uh, pressure, bowing into pressure? No, I, 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 don't, I don't understand what they mean by giving in. I'm saying that the statement that issued today, uh, yesterday mm. was absolutely clear that the president responded not to pressure from anywhere. Okay. He responded to petition and a plea of remorse that was, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, put out by the petitioners the petitioner themselves. Okay. That is it. So to call him a weak president, well, you, if, 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 if you mean by weak, he is compassionate. Well, you Jesus, Christ, with that. Jesus Christ was said to be weak, you know? Mm -hmm. You could have exercised other powers. So you do agree the president is the weak president? No, yeah. I don't agree. I think that it only shows that the president is a fair uh, you know, uh, leader, 
and um, he he doesn't bow to uh, any any calls from. Do you, do, do you think this will? I mean, you've been in governance before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You think this will in any way affect the president's chances, particularly as we head into uh, December? Why should you? There will be more, many more, you know, uh, petitions that will be before the president that you have to deal with. This you, is you, only you, one you thing. Think, you think many more people will vote for the president because of his compassion? You, will, I bet you, will be surprised the number of people who will say that this is the president mm. who can grant amnesty to even to an MPP MP. Mm. You see, that is the president you should want to look for, the one who will not look at party. We say he granted amnesty to uh, Honorable Ademu Sekandi, mm. regularly, uh, uh, what do you call it, convicted by the court. Did yeah. the courts complain? You understand? They didn't need it. Okay. Because uh, it's legitimate. So for me, I would want to support a president who will be even handed, like in this case. I think that we are happy on our side that the president listened to the petition right. and the pleas of our clients. Nana Atudazi, many thanks for your time Welcome. on news today, this afternoon. Yeah. And Nana Atudazi is yeah. uh, lead counsel uh, for the three deal contaminants. Well, uh, they will be released on Friday. I'll bring you some uh, more on that, particularly when they are released. I'm hoping you'll be able to bring your clients to studio so we could speak to them. Oh, anyway, yeah, like uh, we'll continue with that discussion in a short while. But you're still watching news today here on the Joining Channel on Multi TV. It's also available on your Go TV channel 144 and your DSTV channel 421. We're taking a break. When we return, we'll tell you some more. Stay with us. Some more stories now. And President John Dramani Mahama is today continuing with his campaign tour of the northern region. The president is expected to visit the Pandai, Wulensi, Bimbila, and Yendi constituencies. Tashmin Mohammed joins me on phone now uh, with some more on that. Tashmin, uh, good afternoon. Many thanks for joining us. Can you tell us whether or not the president has begun uh, his second day tour of the northern region? Okay, it appears we've lost uh, Hashmin on the line. We'll try and raise him back on for a conversation on that. But away from that, Executive Secretary of the National Peace Council, Francis Azuma, has called on President Mahama to sack appointees who have prior knowledge of brewing conflict and yet sleep over it. He said there's no need to condone with the attitude of such appointees because they have behaved irresponsibly. The National Peace Council Executive Secretary made a statement in WA during the inauguration of a 14-member early warning and response committee in war. Rafik Salam has more. Out of the 11 constituencies in the Upper West region, four of them are mapped out as flash points and require special attention. In order to prevent, manage and promptly respond to conflicts in these flash points, a 40-member committee was integrated by the Upper West Regional Minister, Amin Amid Suleimani. He stated that Although the region is relatively peaceful, there have been occasional security concerns that require immediate attention. These have been the forms of inter- and intra-party conflicts, illegal manner activities, as I'm saying, land issues, disputes, petty crime, robbery, <coughs> hate and certain species at radio stations, and what have you as a young region which needs peace and stability to catch up with the rest of the regions in terms of development. This situation is quite disturbing to the United Peace Security Council. Executive Secretary of the National Peace Council, Francis Azuma, expressed worry over the attitude of some government appointees for failing to act quickly to prevent conflict in their areas. He called on the president to sack such appointees who sleep over their jobs. It serves no point when you communicate early warning signals to the RCC or to any district assembly and you sit over them. Then it explodes. They say, oh, we had the signals a long time. I've always told myself that any chief executive council are telling me to say that, oh, we had the signals a long time. But uh, you know, I, I, I always tell myself that this, this is a candidate for sack. Because you, the information came to you. Then there is this thing simmering on the ground, and you slept over it, then it exploded. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa... 
Well, let's just stay up north and this time around in the northern region as we return uh, to our previous story of uh, the president uh, continuing with his campaign tour of that very region. Rafiq Salam, uh, I beg your pardon, Hashmin Mohammed is joining me on phone now with uh, some more. Hashmin, good afternoon, many thanks for joining us. I was asking really uh, whether or not the president has begun his second day tour of the region and what he's been doing so far. Hello, Ashmin, can you hear me? Ashmin Mohammed, can you hear me? Okay, it appears you do not have Ashmin Mohammed on the line. Uh, we can move on and do a few more stories now. And land guards terrorizing the lives of residents of Fosukrum near Tiobodom in the Bonahafu region have been arrested. The arrests come uh, as great relief to residents because, according to them, the land guards have been harassing them for a long time. We don't have peace here, and I always get scared when my children have to go on errands. It's also very frightening at night. My husband has traveled, and I'm left alone with my children. They came to suck us even when we were working, so we are not able to work anymore. We plead that the leaders come to our aid. I'm happy the police has helped us. It's been four years since this started. We are not able to build houses nor even have church service. The curfew has gone on for so long. We are happy and we thank the police. We hope the culprits are dealt with. Let's get some more on this very story from uh, my colleague Anas Abit to join us from the Bunafu region. Anas, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Now, uh, how much of a problem is this issue of uh, land guards in your region? Well, it's new to uh, the people of the region, especially the uh, mm -hmm. until recently, uh, some uh, years back, uh, when uh, uh, people started terrorizing or land guards started terrorizing the lives of uh, residents of Kutuku, which is uh, near Kyobodum. So it's, it's quite new, but uh, until recently, uh, the people living around that particular area are, are living in fear because uh, they are unable to uh, stay in their homes as well as uh, go out uh, during the night or uh, for the fear of land that uh, in the uh, environment. Now, has the police been speaking of a specific measures or a, a specific approach to dealing with this menace just so uh, it doesn't become uh, as widespread as it is elsewhere? Yes, the police have had several reports uh, prior to uh, the arrest of uh, some two land that uh, this weekend. Uh, and the police have uh, called on uh, the general public, especially those living within the system and its suburbs to uh, be cooperative with the police uh, and giving them the needed information uh, so they will be able to deal with it. But the police are of uh, the belief that the arrest made this weekend will uh, serve as deterrent or one to uh, the others who are yet to be uh, brought to court. So the police here are putting in measures. Uh, I have to uh, commend them for the wonderful uh, you know, work they did over the weekend in Right. You know, after you know, arresting the two guys who are currently uh, with the police traffic. So the police here, uh, Tenten, are doing very good uh, on that. Okay. Anas Abit, many thanks for that update. And that was uh, Anas Abit joining us from the Bruno Hafu region with some more on the issue of land guards in that very region. Well, it appears the police uh, have uh, put in a few more measures to ensure that the situation does not become as widespread as it is elsewhere. You're still watching news today here on your Joy News channel on Multi TV. Time now for some business with Emmanuel Abouadjiriafe.